Hello, bearded bee people. Welcome back to the Bee and K's Bees channel. Uh, a much requested topic for videos has been uh, grafting, queen rearing in general. I am not an expert at it, but uh, I've made a whole bunch of mistakes, so I've got a bunch of lessons that you might be able to learn from. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm still in the process of figuring out the absolute system. Um, I've had problems with you know, queens not getting mated and populating mating nukes and keeping them populated and cells getting torn down because of early queens hatching and, and stuff that I think a lot of people go through. But, um, you know, each mistake, if you if you go about it correctly, is a is a new lesson and um, an advancement toward your ultimate goal of being proficient at something. So, like I said, I've made a bunch of them and maybe I'll have something to teach you. Either way, uh, this is my queenless starter. They're pretty packed in there. Um, basically, a queenless starter is just that. It's, it's, a, it's a hive without a queen. Um, preferably, in my experience, a hive without a queen and without brood. Um, if, the, if there is brood, at least without uh, young brood. Without brood that they can make a queen from because they'd rather make it from what they had than from what you give them. Um, so, this was... Uh, an active and, and very healthy hive. I took the queen and some other bees and put them into a mating nuke because I found that that's a really easy way to get those populated. Um, and I took the brood out, the brood of that age anyway, and distributed it amongst the, uh, amongst the apiary. Um, if you watch Dr. Larry Connor and a lot of other guys, they talk about making queenless starters by shaking nurse bees into a specialized box and that works very well too, but if you just have a box that works or looks like it would make a very good queenless starter and you think you have another use for the queen or, or another place that you can put her and you can just make that hive um, queenless and go with that. The thing that I, I, I definitely recommend is to make the hive extremely densely populated. Uh, the more bees in there, the more uh, cells they're going to accept and work on and the better those cells will turn out um, as a result. So this is the queenless starter, like I said, I'm going to grab, I, I put in the cell bar frame yesterday when I took the queen out. So they've been queenless for a day and they've had the cell bar frame for a day. They've been polishing that up and I'm going to grab that now. Um, and then the next step will be to grab the donor frame and then it will be grafting. And uh, I'll have you along throughout the process. So here I am grabbing this cell bar frame. cover came up with the lid, the sticky lid, or sticky inner cover, depending on how you want to look at it. This box has a few bees in it, I would say. So, get that cell bar frame, get those bees off of it. Kind of fun. I marked it with an X with the hive tool on the top. So you can see they've been paying that attention. Get those bees off of it get bees out of my face, get them closed back up, leave that space the way it is, because um, you're going to have to put the bars back in after they've been grafted into. Okay. Wow, they drew that out in a matter of a couple hours. We'll have to keep an eye on that because that can make harvesting the cells quite difficult. Let's see if I can grab all this with one hand and walk down to 
figure out what we're gonna take from the donor frame or the donor hive. I think we're gonna go with this one here. It's a first generation Mary Ellen Queen. I've told you guys about that interesting story. Some really uh, hardy bees, hardy local bees. And I'm trying to create as many daughters of hers as I can. I'm gonna go grab the brush. I'll be right now we're, we're looking for the youngest larva we can find. Um, it'll be about three or four days from, or three and a half or so days from when the egg was laid. But you don't have to worry so much about that math. Um, if your queen's laying the hive up, she'll do it in a rainbow pattern. So the younger stuff or the earlier stuff um, is laid in the center and it gets younger and more recent as it goes out in a rainbow pattern. So you find where eggs are and where older larvae are and go right in the middle of that and you're grabbing some, some good larvae. Now, another rule of thumb is that you want to get it before it turns into a C, rather when it's straight or a comma. Um, and I, I don't have a fancy enough camera to be able to show you guys that, but I'll hopefully append a picture that I found on the interwebs so that you guys can get a, uh, a good idea of what that looks like. Some people go to a lot of effort to contain the queen to one specific frame and then wait a specific amount of days and all that, but I don't see that all that's necessary. I think it's adding a little bit of difficulty where it's not all that difficult. You want a well-populated donor hive as well because a correctly aged larvae in a well-populated hive are fed more so they're floating in more royal jelly. They're easier to pick up that way and also they don't desiccate as quickly. They don't dry out as quickly. We'll talk about that again in a little bit. So that's food. So this looks like a good frame. There are a lot of eggs and a lot of young larvae amidst um, you know, cap root. So the center portion had emerged and the queen got back in there quickly and laid it back up, um, which is exactly what you want to see. So now I'm going to find the queen so that I make sure that I am not uh, brushing her off. That's not, not royal treatment. I don't think she's on this frame, but I've made assumptions like that before and paid for it. So I'm going to make sure by finding her. There she is. Okay. So I'm going to put her back. Put the frames back the way they were with the space. For the uh, the frame I'm taking out left open, so that when I get back over here after the grafting, I can just push it right back in. Okay, so I have the donor frame here. I've got the cell bars. I have three warm, damp rags to keep over the cell bars after the after they've been grafted into to kind of help prolong the desiccation process. The thing you might see me doing, or that you will see me doing, that you probably won't see other people doing, is I take my right, right contact out. I'm nearsighted, and if I take that out, I can get my face real close to the frame and see the 
larva pretty well. So you just do whatever it takes for you to be able to see the larvae quite well. Um, because it's difficult if you can't, you're gonna damage a lot of them. They're just so, so, so tiny and they're almost translucent or transparent. Um, and it's just, it's difficult. So, I use Chinese grafting tools because you can pick up some, you can pick up some uh, royal jelly with the larvae. And they're cheap, so buy a bunch of them. You'll go through a bunch of them. They're not extremely well-made products, but they work. They're cheap, and I haven't found anything that works better. So I'm taking the cell bars off of the frame so they're more easily dealt with. And I have a flashlight. these where they belong. Come on, Allie. And I'm gonna make my country proud. Okay, so now, in two days, after they've started and accepted all the cells that they're gonna start and accept, I'm gonna move it above a queen excluder and a queen right finisher. It'll be at least a double story hive with the queen locked below, queen excluder, and, and leave that um, for probably another seven or eight days before I put them in virgin emergence cages to ward off the problematic early release uh, queen. See if one hatches before you have the opportunity to take care of the cells and put them where they should go, they will tear down all the rest of them. They know they only need one queen, and so that's a problem. I, that just happened to me a short, you know, a few days ago. So I'm gonna put them in virgin emergence cages. Sorry if I'm showing you my boxers. Um, I'm going to put them in virgin emergence cages. And then on day 14 from when the egg was laid, I'm going to put them in, ma in mating nymphs. So I hope to make this kind of a, a series, hopefully following these cells from, you know, graft to hopefully many laying queens. But there are a lot of, a lot of stops along the way where problems can arise. I'll try to talk about them as we reach them. But that's at least the first process, the grafting. Um, a lot of people think, you know, they're, they're um, intimidated by the process and they think that grafting is a very difficult thing to do. It's not grafting that is difficult. Um, it's getting the queens to hatch and then be, or getting the cells accepted, getting the queens to hatch, um, getting the queens mated and having the queens return from being mated. Uh, those are the hard parts. So if you're into the nicket system or if you do a lot of OTS, uh, walk away splits, um, you pretty much understand the, the difficult part. Picking up of the tiny larvae 
uh, is not difficult. It takes some practice. Um, you know, I my acceptance rate has gone up steadily since I started, but uh, once you get it down and get the because there's kind of a twist motion to it. Um, say if this is the if this is the larva, and my right hand is the grafting tool, it's kind of one of these, but um, that's so difficult to get to show up on camera that I didn't even attempt it. So, but just get into it, you know, start it, try it. Uh, the worst thing that can happen is you get a few cells uh, to come out of it rather than many, but uh, I mean, it's no harm done and it's not a big investment. I saw somebody on one of the, um, one of the Facebook forums, beekeeping queen rearing forums say that they didn't want to invest a lot of money. The JZBZ cups are cheap, the cell bars are cheap, the grafting tools are incredibly cheap. Um, and I mean all you need other than that are some some bees and a little bit of knowledge. So hopefully this helps you out. If you guys want to see more, let me know in the comments or if you have any questions, I'll you know hopefully have the answer for you, but if not I'll find one. Um, but as I always say, if you're not already, click subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Click like if you like this video. Otherwise, get out and have some fun with your bees.